Grand Island, Nebraska is a peaceful Midwestern farming town where fields of wheat and corn fill the landscape. It's a small, tight-knit community where most people tend to know and trust one another. Early on the morning of September 21st, 1989, Randy McDonald was driving along a road near his farm. I could see up ahead of me that this car was in the ditch. As I got up there, I stopped. You guys need some help or something? Oh, we rolled our... This man and woman were standing there, and she looked awful pale and white and nervous. She just asked me if I'd pull them out. She did the driving out. She did all the talking. He never said anything to me the whole time he was there. He never said thanks or anything. You know, he just kind of was a spectator, more or less. There you go. I took the chain off, and uh, that was it. Almost like they was in a hurry, maybe. If I'd have known something was going on, I, I would have liked to have tried to help her out. I want to run to dinner. Please, please. What's the problem? I'm just about stabbed to death. The call came into dispatcher Charlene Rathjen at 8.32 a.m. You're stabbed? Yes, you many need times. An ambulance? What? You need an ambulance? Very bad, so. You need an ambulance? Yes. Over the years, I've come to know that people because they're scared, will make an injury sound worse than it is. When she first says, I'm nearly stabbed to death, okay, do we have a little cut here, or do we have a big stab? What's your address? I don't know where Maddox is. She's out of the country. I'm in this big white house. All right, is there somebody there? No, I broke into the house because nobody was here. Oh, Lord. Well, ma'am, you got to you gotta calm down now a little bit here and tell me if you can figure out where you're at. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, just calm down a bit here. We do not have an enhanced 911 system. If we had had enhanced 911, we would have been able to tell immediately where she was. Okay. What's your name, first Rebecca. Who, who stabbed you, Rebecca? Brad Geiger. I knew I had to, to try and keep her calm till we got somebody there, because the more agitated she got, the more she was going to bleed. Okay, can you look around and see if you can find an envelope? Oops. Oh, there's something. It's a route three by one. Oh, route three by four. Okay. Because the address was a rural route box number, it could still take hours to find the house. So dispatcher Kathy Bruckner called the post office to try to get more specific okay, directions. The the you can tell you have a feeling for calls when they come in. You know, I could tell from Charlene's reaction that this was heavy duty. Three miles east. At Balsam and Eaton's on Highway 30 and two miles north. Where are you stabbed at? Where are you hurt at? Um, I'm hurt mostly in my hand because I tried to st stop him from getting in my throat. Okay. And is there, are you stabbed anywhere else? Are you bleeding a lot? I don't know. I'm bleeding. I have the water. I think throat too. I'm about to pass out. Okay. Um, just, just settle down. Are you sitting down? Yeah. Okay. Can you call somebody for me? Well, we're going to get somebody out there as soon as we figure out how to get out there. Okay. Okay. Do you have asthma? No. Okay. I think you got my throat. No, no. I'm Hurry. You got to hurry. I'm about to pass out. Okay. you are back up now. Listen. Let's calm down, okay? Just calm down. My worst fear was that I wasn't going to be able to figure out where she was and that I wasn't going to get anybody out there in time to her because there was a feeling that as the call progressed, I thought she was going to die before they got there. How long have you been out there, Rebecca? It happened at 20 till 8. 20 till 8? Uh huh. After he did this, he just got out of the car and ran. Yeah. I gotta go. No, 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 don't hang up the phone. She just got weaker and weaker and weaker, and her breathing got more difficult. But you can't let them just give up. You can't let them hang up. continue.
We came into the field at a very low level. We were intentionally flying low, hoping that we could see this subject in these cornrows. After being repeatedly stabbed in a violent attack, the 20-year-old victim, Rebecca, had managed to make her way to an empty farmhouse and call for help. But without the aid of an enhanced 911 system, dispatchers were afraid they would not be able to locate the isolated house before Rebecca bled to death. I'm afraid he's gonna come back. I broke in the window and he'll see the broken window and I know where I at. Why did he do this? You know? Um, I worked with him and he seemed to be a nice guy. Again, he rides to work lots of times because he doesn't have a car that works. And he called me at 7 this morning or so and said, I'm over here by your house, so you come get me and take me to my house. And I did. And then he raped me at his house at knife point. But she just started laying it out, and I think she was so scared she had to tell somebody. And I think Rebecca just wanted somebody to know in case something happened to her before she got help that somebody was going to know who did this to her. And then he took me, he said he was going to run away, hitchhike to Omaha, and then his bag was out here in the road somewhere. And if I could just take him there and leave, that he'd be all right. Then I was driving too fast. I was driving about 55 on the gravel road, and the gravel was real thick. And I, the car, I lost control of the car, and it rolled a couple of times, and it did. He got out of the car. And then he, tried, he pulled out his knife after it rolled on the side of the car. This car's on its side. And I closed the window and locked the doors. Then he punched in the window and tried to stab me. And then the guy came and pulled us out. And who was the guy that came that pulled you out? I don't know. I don't know. There was a little bit of blood on us, but we told him it was just from the accident. I don't know. And he was a real nice guy in a big Florida pickup, pulled us out in the chain. And then we still hadn't make it to the place he wanted to go. He said, he, I told him I didn't want to go out in the gravel roads. And then I, he said his stuff was on the highway. But I'm not familiar with this area of town. No. No. Okay, we have a little bit of difficulty in the Huh? Just a minute. They found him? No, just a minute. He gave us a large two-story white house. It is two story, isn't uh, it? I think so. Is there a fence at the gate? Yeah, the big, big fence at the gate, big yard. Or a big fence at the gate, and there's 13 dogs barking. I can hear them. Okay, there should be an ambulance out there, Rebecca. But just stay on the phone with me. Don't hang up. I want to make sure that they're in the house with you. So not yet. Okay. My hand is starting to hurt a lot now. Okay, honey, they should be there. Once she knew there was somebody coming, well, then that's when she settled down, and the longer she talked, the less labored her breathing got. Wait, I hear somebody. Okay. I'll... I hope it's not Brad. No, no, no. Just settle down. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here, here. Somebody's here, somebody's here. Okay, all right, just calm down. Oh, oh it's not Brad. They're here, they're here. Okay, honey. Okay. <laughs> You sure be tell about the rape business, okay? You tell them that, all right, Rebecca? When you know they're there, it's always a big relief because then I don't have to be calm anymore. And if I want to feel bad about it, I can. Paramedic Jim Bedoric and his partner treated Rebecca at the scene. She was very frightened and uh, rightfully so. She was pretty much covered with blood from head to toe. Can you breathe all right? Okay, everything. It was apparent from the wounds that she had on her hands that she was fending off blows and fighting to protect herself. She was fighting for her life. Rebecca? This really made a big impact on me. Rape is a violent crime. It's not a sexual crime. And, you know, the graphic illustration of it's what really made the impact on me. The young woman was later questioned by Grand Island Police Detective Rick Ressel. After the sexual assault, he wanted Rebecca to drive him to a location where he had placed some of his belongings. At least that's what he said.
drove to a location where a driveway went into a cornfield and she realized that there probably is not any belongings there and that Geiger wants to kill her. Rebecca grabbed the keys out of the car. Geiger caught up with her and grabbed a hold of her and he started to slash her with a knife. During the struggle, she lost the car key somewhere. He grabbed her hair, threw her onto the ground, and uh, Rebecca grabbed the blade of the knife and bent the blade of the knife with her bare hand. During the attack, uh, he attempted to straighten the blade, and Rebecca was able to break away from him and started running away. The only thing I could think about was getting help. I just knew I had to get away from him. I knew I had to run to the farmhouse. She started yelling for help. However, no one was at home. The doors were locked, so she breaks out a window and manages to get into the house. It, it's just, I'm really impressed by her strong will and desire to live. Many, many people would have just laid down and died under the same circumstances. The young victim was rushed to the nearest hospital with 21 stab wounds as state patrol officers, the National Guard, and sheriff's deputies from three counties began a massive manhunt. After five hours, a tip from a caller led investigators, including Patrol Sergeant Gary Esser, to a cornfield not far from the house where the victim had been found. In this particular case, the cover was so heavy that if you would have been three foot into this cornfield, you probably couldn't have seen three foot. We came into the field at a very low level. We were intentionally flying low, hoping that we could see this subject in these cornrows. But it's a jungle in there. At one point, I could see the prop wash lifting the corn leaves and so forth. They were actually suspended in the air. And under this, I could see this subject lying in one of the rows. I, could see this I was yelling at people with my portable radio that he was directly under us. Uh, the officers on the ground then started moving in. After six hours of searching, the manhunt was finally over. The suspect later pleaded guilty to rape and attempted second-degree murder and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. In the two years since the attack, the physical wounds have completely healed. Just last week, Rebecca was engaged to be married. The hardest part of the recovery was mental. There was a lot I had to work through, but it was just the will to survive. And the fact that I was only 20, I hadn't gotten married, I had, I had a whole life in front of me. And uh, it was just a very, very strong will to survive. I just had to, you know, nobody was to die. I really, really liked being the kind of person that could trust anybody. I'd like to be that way again, but I know it's not possible in today's world. That incident taught me to be very cautious. You just can't trust everybody you think you want to. Recently, Rebecca got a chance to meet the 911 dispatchers who helped save her life. Hi, Charlene. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca Smith. Nice <laughs> I want to meet you for so long. It was wonderful meeting Charlene and Kathy. I wanted to meet them for a long time. They're just sweet as I ever thought they were. This is Kathy. <laughs> Most of the time, people forget about us in Tarla. So this, it was quite a treat to get to meet somebody that we helped. I was glad I was able to. I was glad that she was able to walk down them stairs and come in and talk to us. I really was. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I told myself I wasn't either. Seeing her today made me go back to that day and just 
know that it could have been a whole lot worse. It could have turned out just horribly. And just to, to think, looking at her to, today, thinking, well, hey, this, this all turned out okay. You know, she's, she's okay. And that's the most important thing, that she's okay. She was my lifeline. She wasn't even there for me to hug or anything. She was saved my life. Thank you.